I can tell you that one of the unanswered questions uh, that we've run into recently is a study that was really done a while back uh, by the NSABP because some patients with DCIS have HER2 positivity. It's not something we normally test for, but there was a very large NSABP study that looked at treating DCIS patients who were HER2 positive, it's a subset, with Herceptin, with Trastuzumab and looking at whether that reduced the recurrence in those patients who have a higher recurrence risk in general. And that study, that very large study, very, uh, a lot of money spent, um, showed a trend but did not show a statistically significant difference. And so we've sort of let that go for many years. Um, what we've learned recently using this same residual risk subtype that's based on KRAS pathway activation, it appears that when you look at the HER2 positive patients in the DCIS category, a large a subgroup of those are the residual risk subtype, but another group are not. And we, it, look, it appears that that's the group where you would really see a benefit because the group that is in the um, low risk or in the elevated risk without the residual risk subtype, they don't seem to have a lot of risk. They don't have that high risk where you would see a difference if you had a treatment that was effective. So we are working hard to line up a way to get tissue from that study and do the same thing that the original validation did with the uh, SWE DCIS trial. But it do, I do think we are very likely to see a trastuzumab or an anti-HER2 benefit in the HER2 positive patients that are in that residual risk subtype group. So that's something that we're looking forward to.